cool. We're really briefly going to talk about different types of compounds. This is not an exhaustive list. There are some funky ones that don't fit into any of these categories. But these are the three major ones, and we're definitely going to talk about how to name each of these in a minute, hence we're bringing this up. So ionic compounds composed of both positive ions and negative ions, cations and anions, which we'll definitely speak of much more later. How do we recognize if we have an ionic compound? Good. Metal with a non-metal. And then also, um, I think, polyatomic ion? Yeah, or if it involves polyatomic ions. Give me an example of a polyatomic ion. Um, O2. So, N2. Mm. Technically, there is the peroxide ion that's O2, but... SO4 Good. Something like... So if you have a compound that contains SO4 2 minus, as long as we don't pair it up with just plain old H, which would technically be an acid, but with any other kind of metal ion or something like that, that would be still an ionic compound, even though we're not technically going to strictly metal with one, mon you know, one metal, one non-metal. Um, cool, we also have molecular compounds. How do we recognize these? Uh, two non yeah, two non-metals. And we're typically looking at covalent bonding between two non-metals rather than ionic. But we'll definitely stu study that in much more detail later on. But non-metal with non-metal. So we want any two of these or more, technically. So a good example would be like water carbon dioxide, so on and so forth. Uh, we call these molecular because these are the ones that actually exist as molecules. So this is tricky because not all, you know, not all compounds exist as molecules. So if I have an ionic compound, it will not exist as a molecule. If we have salt, sodium chloride, there is no such thing as a sodium chloride molecule. If I have pure salt at room temperature, what does that look like? Little white crystals. How many sodium and chloride atoms are in a single crystal? Uh, well, technically not so much the case, unless you had a 58.44 gram crystal, then it would be Avogadro's number of each. So, but in this case, it depends on the crystal size. The bigger the crystal, the more you have of each. But you don't just have one sodium and one chloride. Whereas if you have a single water molecule, you have two H's and one O in that one molecule. If you have a single CO2 molecule, you have one carbon and two oxygen atoms in that one molecule. But ionic compounds don't exist as molecules, so we can't talk about them in the same sense. So if we talk about molecular weight, we're typically only going to talk about molecular weight for molecular compounds. So for an ionic compound like NaCl, instead of talking about the molecular weight, we just say, well, what's the weight of one formula? And we call it the formula weight instead. So if you saw formula weight, you'd calculate it just like you would molecular weight. It's just we call it formula weight because technically they don't exist as molecules. Uh, finally, acids. Acids typically have what uh, element? Hydrogen. Hydrogen. Give me the most famous acid. Uh, HCl. HCl. It's in your stomach. You put it in your pool. Pretty common acid. Pretty famous. So he's what we call a binary acid. It's made of just hydrogen and one other element. But the other kind of acids we have are what we call oxoacids or oxyacids. And they're just the acids of some of those polyatomic ions that contain oxygen. So in addition to these types of compounds, these are the types of compounds you need to know how to name as well. So nomenclature is the next thing on our docket. And unfortunately, each of these has their own set of rules, which really sucks. Biggest mistake students make is they try and name an ionic compound using the molecular compound rules, or vice versa. So, or they mix up some of the acids. So there's two different types with two different sets of rules. It is a pain in the butt, and I apologize. So, but we're just going to dive in. Let's talk about ionic compounds.